Hello, everyone. I hope that uh, everyone is doing fine and is safe. Um, I'm really sorry, I haven't, I'm not able to join today. I really wanted to. Um, uh, I really appreciate and enjoy the uh, open source community, and particularly for Sasia. Unfortunately, the circumstances don't allow. Um, but we're lucky in a way. We're in 2020, and technology allows us to um, to be anywhere remotely and uh, and recall. So I just want to join this opportunity to share with you on um, uh, how cloud native and containers really help security moving forward. But before we delve into the topic, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jordan Walter. Um, I am lucky enough, as it were. Again, in a generation where we can uh, be proud to be digital native, I'm, uh, I'm born with a computer, more or less. Uh, I have a degree in, uh, in uh, business and in engineering, but really, uh, in the last 15 to 20 years, I've, uh, I've played with a number of role developers, uh, system engineers, particularly Linux, uh, security for the last 15 years. And so a lot of my discussion today will be really blended and um, showing and focusing on how we can leverage those tools that uh, developers, uh, IT um, system engineers, and uh, uh, use every day. Uh, how can we use them for, to improve security? And uh, today, uh, Phil CISO at Pivotal, um, which has been uh, acquired by VMware, so the name will change quickly. Uh, and so as a field CISO, I help companies, large companies, who go through this transformation of cloud native. I help them uh, leverage and embrace those technologies to, uh, to improve their security. So uh, I want to share this with you because I do believe that there is a lot of opportunities here uh, to fix the kind of challenges that we're uh, having in the security, uh, in the security uh, landscape today. VMware. Uh, might not be top and foremost when it comes to open source, right? No, uh, if you ask what companies are, are open source, uh, VMware is known for vSphere, so it's not really uh, that, that, uh, that known that they are an absolutely big contributor to open source. And open source is a massive uh, part of uh, the roadmap of VMware. Um, not for the least that uh, if you follow the news, uh, our CEO then has announced that the strategy of the company is uh, Kubernetes. And so VMware is the second biggest contributor in terms of code to Kubernetes today. Um, so it's really a big commitment in open source. Uh, as part of the acquisition of Pivotal, Pivotal was also the, uh, uh, the curator of Spring, which most developers among you would know and Cloud Foundry. So these are the three very big projects that um, VMware is committing into uh, maintaining, fostering, making absolutely, um, uh, absolutely uh, uh, developed further. Um, there is also a number of other projects that VMware has been uh, releasing in open source, has been contributing to. Uh, I won't enter the details, uh, but really, VMware, uh, you should be thinking of VMware as a net contributor and uh, an advocate of open source, and this is why we're here. So today we'll be talking uh, about cloud native. Uh, so we can't talk about um, cloud native security without actually um, looking at what cloud native here. Unfortunately, still today people have a lot of variations in, uh, in, the, uh, in the definition of cloud and cloud native. So we'll delve into this definition first before looking at the security, or how do you, the security of containers and how cloud native security really helps uh, security moving forward. So let's start. Um, when you ask people what the cloud is or what cloud native application is, you typically would receive a lot of different uh, answers. But lucky for us, um, some organizations have done a very great job in defining it. So if you look at the uh, NIST um, definition of what the cloud is, it's really about being able to um, deliver on-demand resources, being network, uh, computing, storage, uh, on-demand, being able to create them, destroy them on-demand rapidly with minimal management uh, overheads. And that's really the massive change we've seen in the last, uh, in the last 10 years in the uh, adoption of those. Uh, 
cloud technologies, on being able to go click, provide resources. And that really changed also the way we deploy your application and we think of application. That's what uh, cloud native application is about, is leveraging the ability to, to provision and destroy resources on demand and uh, easily to develop applications that are scalable, uh, applications that are um, adapted to this uh, environment and to go develop faster. So this is uh, why the core of Cloud Native is about uh, lossy-couple applications, provisioning automation, microservices, because this is the core of uh, how do you leverage the ability of those cloud technology to develop application better. So really, if you scratch the surface, that means that uh, the public cloud, the cloud gives you any resources anywhere in a matter of minutes. And Cloud Native allows you to push an application anywhere at any time. But all of it is really software defined. The core of what cloud is, is software defined everything. Software defined application fabric, software defined network, software defined uh, infrastructure. And unless you really think of everything being software defined, you really uh, are challenged in, uh, in the cloud. And really enables you to do scalability, dynamic uh, workloads, really on demand. And the core of cloud native is really containers, right? If you, if you look at um, cloud native applications, they need to be distributed, they need to be consistent, to be deployed easily, and that's what containers give us. They give us a way to deploy lightweight workloads, uh, portable anywhere, consistent across uh, the workloads. But really, are they secure or not? This is what we want to explore. If you look at containers, usually uh, people ask and have a discussion around security of containers. So there's two types of security you need to look at. On one hand, the security of the container. Are you building a container that is secure, that reduce your uh, that, that reduce your attack surface and is well configured. But once you go to cloud native application, actually we get a lot of opportunities to rethink the way we do security thanks to microservices and containers. And that's really what I want to explore and what we want we need to dip in, into cloud native security. So let's look. Container security. In a traditional environment, uh, you know, we provision operating systems and then we build anything manually on top of it. Uh, networking, runtime, uh, runtime layers, Microsoft, everything is customized because your application demand different settings and different configuration. This is a really overhead we're dealing with today. In terms of container as a service or platform as a service, uh, you really need to think as provisioning Automating, uh, automating provisioning for your operating system, your networking, and your container runtime, which is consistent across all the nodes you have. Regardless of the application running on it, your operating system, your networking, and your container runtime should be the same. And that really gives you one first benefit, is instead of dealing with inconsistencies and uh, this snowflake configuration, you by adopting containers, you ensure that this 90, this 80% below the value line um, is consistent, even though today it's a lot of the, of the security work today. We, we do today, trying to figure out whether our servers are well configured. On top of it, we put containers. So the container runtime is critical in the security aspect, and that's really what we are going to do. But also the application, the content of the application as, as well is very important. So let's dive into um, those patterns, or those key points that we need to look at in container security. First, your operating system. In the past, we were deploying big operating system because we wanted them to be able to run anything. Uh, we didn't really know what application would be deployed on top of it, so you need to have so many different cases that the operating system is maximized and is pretty bulky. Once you move to containers, you want and you really to want to focus in terms of minimizing the size of your containers. Why? Because from a security perspective, we see more and more what we call lay of the land attacks, using what's already on the machine to be able to leverage and do uh, attacks. So by reducing the size of your containers, 
from a developer perspective, you make it faster to deploy. From a security perspective, you reduce the tools that uh, an adversary would be able to use. Of course, you deploy your application so you, and you deploy everything automatically, so you want that to be hardened as well. Um, for the technical uh, folks here, you definitely want to look at the Linux security uh, modules that are important for security. Second, like Armor can really help you make, uh, maximize the security and reduce the, um, uh, the capability to evade uh, containers. Um, namespace separation is very important, but you still need to focus on making sure that uh, you harden even more. But really, the core of the benefit we have in Cloud Native is the principle of immutability. Everything's automated and you're not changing it manually. You reduce your risk of having independent configuration changes. You remove the fact that people connect on the server and do changes there. Everything's automated, everything is consistent. If everything, all your operating system should be the same. And that really reduces a lot of the security overheads we have today. Because if you remove security administrators connecting to the systems, you reduce privileged access challenges inside the threats. That's really an aspect that is important as well. When you do security in, uh, incident investigations, if everything is immutable, if everything is the same, you facilitate the investigation and, and uh, the fact of finding the, um, uh, the mistakes. So it's really the core aspect of uh, cloud native, immutable. If you do changes manually, this is a bad pattern. Great. Sorry, I don't know how to click anymore. The second aspect of it is um, networking. And uh, very often what we see in terms of uh, adapting containers is because networking is really hard and you're going to have a lot of workloads and everything, it's very common to just open a flat network where all your servers and all your nodes are on this open flat network. Um, while it's easy and good for um, efficiency and getting things done, from a security perspective, that's really not the best approach because that means you're really increasing your blast radius. If any of your containers is compromised, you have a risk of blast movement and that is increased. If you think of the cloud, really what we, um, what we enable is software-defined network, attributes-based filtering. So really, if you do and want to embrace large-scale containers uh, platform, it's very important to understand that you want micro-segmentation, you want to really uh, segment appropriately, but you don't want to deal with IPs because IPs are changing every day. So really, networking, remove flat networks, think of the software-defined network as a way to do uh, finer-grained filtering that is um, adapted to your business. The next level up is really the container runtime. And again, here we see a lot of mistakes, unfortunately, so really um, be cautious about it. Um, unfortunately, still today, we see reports of um, uh, Kubernetes platforms that are exposed over the internet, where the APIs are exposed over the internet, or even worse, uh, unauthenticated. That means anyone can do everything. Once everything is open, uh, is software defined, once everything is um, uh, is driven by APIs, you really want to make sure your API endpoints are secure. This is really the core and the center point of all your, of all your data center. If this is not secure, then nothing is secure in your environment. And another big mistake we see is to run privileged containers. Um, one of the core benefits of Linux uh, containers is to create namespace separation to make sure that um, Everything that runs in the container is actually no one and not privileged outside or doesn't have access to modify your host. And that's really one of the things that is important in, uh, in deploying or syncing your container strategy is to make sure that you run unprivileged containers so that even if you're root within a, within a container, you're no one or you're a normal user for the rest of, your, uh, the, rest of the, the host. So it really, again, limits the amount of damage that a malicious user or an attacker would be able to do if something happens here. So really, these are the two core, very, very important uh, red flags that uh, should be mindful 
is making sure that everything uh, is uh, protected, your APIs are protected, and your privilege runs um, contained. But we still have something that goes inside the container, and that's really uh, the image. And that's where really we see the difference. The difference is between container as a service or container platform and uh, application platform uh, is uh, where your image comes from. Once you deploy a uh, container platform like um, Kubernetes, you really still build the content of your image. And that's really where it's extremely important to to protect this, your pipeline, your registries, where all the images are stored, are again um, the center point and the, the crown jewel of your platform. If someone has access or is able to, um, uh, to break into your pipeline and modify things, then you're losing the immutable, the benefits of the immutability of your environment because everyone can change. Again, same, you may put all the security tools in your pipeline to do all your scans if someone can compromise your registries and everything on the platform will eventually be compromised. So these are two very important red flags. Um, protect your pipeline, protect your registry. And because you're building, your developers will be building the content of the image, uh, putting vulnerability management, of course, as part of the pipeline is extremely important. You don't want to, um, to ship vulnerable code, unfortunately. Uh, public registries of image are known for having malware or a lot of vulnerabilities, so this is a very important aspect of them. If you use an application platform, typically you would uh, benefit from uh, pre-built image by trusted resources, uh, by trusted um, uh, sources. Um, in VMware, there would be application services, there would be the application catalog, and um, do use them. Uh, that means someone else does a job for you of looking for vulnerabilities, providing you the latest image. So um, do use this benefit, but that also means that helps you uh, keep everything updated, right? Just uh, deploy regularly to make sure that you have um, uh, you have the latest patch because still today, uh, unpatched software is uh, one of the first um, source of compromise. Phase recap, that means when you build a platform, and Kubernetes is a platform for building a platform, you want to have hardened image, you want to have your zero trust network um, and micro segmented. You need to make sure that all this um, encryption is done, the locks are done. And this is one of the big benefits of going through a platform is you build it once, you do the hard work once of all your compliance and all your, all your security controls and every application that you ship onto it will benefit from it. And so, what are the benefits you go for? Uh, you go, um, you provision fast, a secure by design environment. And one of the key principle of uh, cloud native is to make sure that um, you have parity between development and, and production. So, do provision development environments that are the same as production, so that you don't have these challenges of applications that run and works in dev and do not work in production because we introduce security. This is extremely important in making sure that uh, you increase the flow from developers to the environment, give them environments that they know will work as well in production. That helps you reduce patch cycle, that helps you uh, increase the consistency across the, the nodes, so increase the auditability of your, of your infrastructure, uh, immutability, reduce the insider threats, and so the declarative network also helps you enforce business logic as a network security policy instead of um, hard-coded firewalls that really had, didn't really have any relationship with business logic anymore. So very quickly, if we look at the security aspects, we, uh, we like to look at uh, it from a kill chain. You can't do anything about the, an attack, but once your container is compromised, the first thing you need to do is to reduce persistence done through the hardened uh, operating system and unprivileged containers. You need to reduce privilege escalation. So that's done by removing credentials and also secrets from your code. That's very important. We'll take them regularly. It's done by reducing lateral movement. And most containers platform today will provide you a service mesh and will provide you um, uh, container to container networking in this diagram, that's what Envoy does, making sure that all communications are filtered, authenticated, and that you declare every communication that is allowed across microservices. So once you do that, you really get a lot of benefits, but there's 
three very important things that you benefit as well. The ability to patch without downtime once your application is distributed, and we'll go uh, a little bit more into oh. it later. Uh, the ability to destroy and rebuild because everything is based on code. So from an incidence uh, response perspective, that's a benefit, but also from making sure you don't have malware, that's another benefit. And removing the secrets from your code and rotating regularly also actually um, reduce the, um, the sources of data breach. Um, I believe uh, stolen secret is in the top three of the sources of breach today. And so being able to do that is extremely important. So we've talked about containers. Let's take a little step back and think about how cloud native applications and cloud native practices help security. So anyone who's familiar with, uh, with cloud native will know that we typically uh, look at those applications around 12 factors um, principles. If you're not familiar with them, just read them. It's very important. If you want to summarize them very quickly, that means uh, that really about focusing on applications that are disposable, uh, stateless, uh, microservices driven, uh, that are container based to be able to be portable and API driven. There's a little bit more to it, but that's really the core, the gist of it. And so if you look at those square factors and you try to extract uh, what's the value for security, I usually look at a framework that I call the idea approach. And it's really about being immutable, no change once you push to production, don't change, just rebuild. Distributed, every application should have several nodes so that you can have full tolerance, but that also allows you to do patching. Ephemeral, uh, we used to, in the past, um, have those servers or those um, application that we want to have up and running for so long, or that are inherently up and running for so long because they're so tightly coupled that we can't patch it, that we can't turn them off without having a long negotiation with the business, right? Um, once you deploy and you design application uh, that are cloud native, you want them to be ephemeral. You want them to be able to be destroyed at every point of time, at least a node, uh, one of the instances, uh, without impact to your business. That's what allows you to deploy application seamlessly to your business, but also allows you to patch and to uh, destroy and rebuild. And the other aspects and very important aspect is to make sure that everything is authenticated. Uh, in most organizations today, in most of our applications, we expect to have users that we know uh, connecting to those applications. And so whether it's a network, whether it's a network infrastructure, your application, everything should be authenticated. Most of the applications should be authenticated. And if you think about it, the benefits we have is uh, we've done a lot of progress in, uh, in, um, adapt, uh, in authentication system through the adaptive security. So we have a pretty good idea today in applications that our user is really our users. Step of authentication to factors really had making sure that this is the right user. So if you make sure that um, your application is authenticated, even if you have vulnerabilities, you reduce the criticality of it by just making sure that you know who is in front of it. Of course, there is uh, always some, um, uh, this is a little bit simplified, fine, but by really authenticating all your endpoints, you massively improve your security because your cross-site scripting guarantees, your cross-site request closure, right? if you know who they are, uh, it's less, less likely that you have your cyber criminal behind. If it's your customer behind. So uh, really look at those four principles because they really change the way we do security. The immutable AAT really increases consistency and allows you to have to be auditable. The distribution allows you fault tolerance and the other time patching. Um, ephemeral workloads allows you to ensure that the code in production is actually what's in your repository. And that really helps again on the auditability, but that also allows, helps you in confidence that if tomorrow something happens, you can rebuild it at any time. The authentication really improve traceability, but also improve, um, uh, reduce your, uh, your risk by enforcing zero trust. And it really maps down those principles to the key aspects of data breach today. Stolen credentials, backdoors, and unpatched vulnerabilities. If your 
able to, if you're immutable and you know that no one can deploy anything and you can destroy to make sure you, you push clean code and clean application at any point of time, your backdoors are gone. If you're able to rotate your credentials, your stolen credentials are gone. Are gone. Really, we see these benefits everywhere. So we look at the new cyber hygiene today around the three R's and it's a simple way of remembering uh, by improving the ability to repair, to find your vulnerabilities and fix them faster by having a distributed system, an immutable system that can be that cannot be uh, by zero downtime, you really improve security. By having code-driven applications that are distributed, you can repave, which means rebuilding regularly um, to make sure that what runs in production is what you want and not something has been compromised. If you rotate your credentials again, all those breaches that we see, um, uh, that we see where people found credentials being your users or being your APIs, being your infrastructure, even if they leak out, if you rotate regularly, you reduce the risk of misconfiguration as well. So if you want to combine, once you combine this, we really see the benefits. These are important principles, but we only believe in them because we see them working. And so even though Cloud Native is not designed particularly for security, it's designed for developer productivity, for developing better apps and releasing faster, and we see improvement in those factors. The same fabric that enables developers to deploy application fast, that enables uh, uh, those platforms to scale or to reduce the overheads in terms of infrastructure, actually allows our customers to patch. Actually allows to make sure that once they build a platform that is compliant, every application they push into it is deployed constantly and is compliant. That really reduces your overheads and allows your security, uh, security professional to actually focus on the matters, on finding those vulnerabilities, on improving their work with application security to find those vulnerabilities and to, to act in terms of advanced uh, monitoring cases and response to risk. What we also see is large organizations were destroying and rebuilding regularly their infrastructure for business continuity on one hand, but also to make sure that even if they, have comprom they are compromised, the attack window, the time that um, the, um, the attacker has to find another vulnerability and move out of the platform, move to the uh, objective is reduced. Some of our customers are doing this weekly without downtime to their business and moving towards being able to do that daily as well publicly because this is so much benefit into it. Once everything is code and once you practice it, it's very important and the benefits are absolutely massive in creating a, a platform where everyone is confident that even if something happens, we can recover. And really, at the bottom of security, even if we look at all those uh, advanced threats and advanced uh, persistent attack from nation states, the core is mostly most of the case, missing patches. So your ability to patch faster uh, is tremendous. We see improvements that are 9x uh, between the existing environment where, every, where security struggles to get patch attack, where you need to negotiate patching windows with a business to bring down an application when you have critical patches. And it's really critical because this year we see vulnerabilities that are exploited immediately by attackers within days. Even within the day, the vulnerability is disclosed. So your ability to patch very fast when it matters is extremely important in improving the security. And what we really see is improvement in those security outcomes. Your ability to patch, your ability to recover, uh, to rebuild regularly, your, uh, your test coverage is a developer practice that actually reduces as well the number of bugs that are being uh, produced. Your ability to reduce and uh, rotate regularly all your secrets in your platform, really reduce your risk that if one day this one of those secrets is leaking, you have, uh, it could be used for that. So this is it. If I want to, to summarize all of it, I have three calls for you. Think about this idea or principle whenever you develop another an application, really. Is my platform immutable? Do I have people connecting to production? Is it distributed? Can I patch it regularly? Do I destroy it regularly? Our very important principle. 
for your application and particularly for your perimeter. If all your perimeter, everything facing users or internet are destroyed and rebuilt regularly, you've massively improved the security of your organization, even improved the security of the backend system, legacy backend systems you have. Receive your controls. Once you have ephemeral workloads, a lot of things in security changes. Incident response is changing massively. The way you do your audits and your ma and malware prevention is very different as well. So rethink all your controls and making sure that you leverage the fact that you can destroy regularly. And also very importantly, optimize your pasture, your pasture production. Optimize the pipeline to make sure that not only your developers, can push code very fast. And it's extremely important. But security can also change fast. And what we see is by adopting cloud native architecture, we see both winning. Developers being able to develop any faster, security being able to react faster. And this is what frictionless security is about. Removing the overhead so that everyone can focus on what matters and finding those advanced cases and working uh, working uh, together. So that's it. Um, again, I wish I was with you and we could have had a more interactive discussion together. But reach out to me, please. Uh, I'd be happy to uh, to deep dive this with you to explore uh, how we can help you, how cloud native can help you improving your security and how everything software defined can help you improve in security and changing the way you look at, at it. And do it, please. Um, it was a pleasure sharing with you and I hope that you'll reach out to me and we can have this interactive discussion that we would have normally have. And uh, thank you very much.